It's time for another edition of Saturday with Seniors here on KC101. Big thank you to our sponsor, Hemingway General Contractors. We do the show every Saturday morning at 10 a.m. And Hemingway has Luxair furnaces, which are 95% efficient, which means gas savings for you. Plus, they come with the best warranty around. Luxair's 10-year parts and labor warranty comes with your furnace package absolutely free when you get uh, your furnace through Hemingway General Contractors. 662-6997 is their number and joining us in our studio 82 year old fred matarco joins us you've lived all over the place but uh, you're currently living right near where you grew up uh, in the wellsbury hi fred hi well thank you for coming on saturday with seniors good to be here you told me your age and i really was like i don't know is this guy old enough for saturday with seniors and i saw you walk in the door but uh you're staying young you're, you're staying active I, i'm guessing uh we're trying to yes well you're doing a great job at it let's go back in time as we do on the show and start about what you were telling me before we went on the air your great grandparents were uh, immigrants into in the, in the united states and eventually ended up in tiger county right yes they did they came in through what we think is ellis island they went to cleveland ohio and then they wanted to get into an area that looked more like home so they came to wellsboro and they moved to ridge road in tioga and then they had kids one of them was your parents right am i following the story yes, right here th- there were 13 kids in the family and one was my father uh, so you have 13 uncles and aunts. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> well, or minus your your father there. Right. So your wife was from Mansfield, and you, you didn't meet till a, a later date than that. But Yeah, uh, she was from Mansfield, and she went to a nursing school at Geisinger. Mm-hmm. It was a two-year course, and I was a year behind in high school because when I was young, I couldn't walk to go to school, and so they held me back here. So she graduated a year before. I did. So we met at uh, Hills Creek Lake one time. To tell you a little story, my friend was a lifeguard and I came there and check out things and he said there not much going on here but there's a nice looking brown bathing suit down there and he said uh, I bet you can't get a date where they're nice. I said I bet I could. So we bet a dollar. I got the date, but I never got the dollar. But I got the girl. <laughs> you got something better than the dollar. Yes, I did. <laughs> it's amazing how many people on this show say that someone said they couldn't do something, and that's what inspired them to do something that was positive in life. So many guests on the show have said that. So Hills Creek State Park, I guess what we're talking about it, what was it like then? Those big pine trees across the other side were probably little pine trees on the other side, and it was it a busy place? And Because uh, state parks were different then. People actually brought charcoal and lit grills and had family parties and get-togethers and spent the day there. Well, my my memories were when we were in high school, a bunch of guys would get together in the wintertime and we'd go over and clear out a space on the snow and play a hockey, but to keep warm, we used to bring along a bunch of tires and set them on fire, which you can't do that nowadays. Yeah, so yeah, there's probably a couple of old radials down the bottom of the, the lake there. So you'd yeah. be what? Bring out tires, pile them up. Nobody mound at you at the time. That was just, that things was, have changed. That, that was just no, a normal thing to do if you wanted some warmth while you're doing hockey in the wintertime. Sure. So at this time period, were you living where? In, in Whitneyville area? A Wellsboro area? At this time, I was living at uh, Crafton Street. Mm -hmm. It was above a place that made tombstones. And in the morning, we would wake up with hearing the tombstones rumbling across the beams when they were moving them around. What is there now? Do you know? Uh, Just so geographically. The TV place. Mm -hmm. Until data. All right, I got you on Crafton Street. Okay. Yeah. Yep. Right across from the state store is now uh, living upstairs. I didn't realize that they made tombstones there. Oh, yeah. (laughs) (laughs) So tell me about the other things that you remember about Wellsboro as that age. Did you go out around town and do things? And and, uh, I remember the Beach Theater, which was a big building on the corner there, which they tore down and and made the gas station. And later, first FCCB Bank is there now on the corner. They have old pictures in their lobby that I think so many people walk by and don't take the time to stop and look. That was a huge five six hundred person theater. Yeah, it was three stories, and it it was huge but across from that there was an, another gas station and in the area where the bookstore is there was a car place and if you go out of wellsboro towards mansfield there was a peak service station on the left up there and there was another service station on the right and up the where the candy place is there highland was, chocolates were, near weiss markets yep. yeah 
there was a gas station called Tomahawk. It was a gas station in a convenience store. And as little kids, when we lived up on Shumway Hill, we would walk up the hill to get on the Shumway Hill Road, and we'd walk down to that station, and the people in there would bring us in. And my wife one time ran into the person that ran the place, and she said, yeah, they come in, and they were frozen, and she said, I'd put them by the fire and wipe the snot from their face. <laughs> <laughs> which was yeah. which was a true story. But as kids, we walked about a mile and a half, whether it was rain and snow, and because the bus yeah. didn't Could come be up snow there. banks, no sidewalk, you just right. walk down the street. And, mm-hmm. and we'd just walk up the hill and down the other way to get to the station and meet the bus at the gas station, which would then take we'd ride to school. Wow, that's a neat story. And you lived... Up by what is now Dragonfly Lane, which is a little bit past where the um, county offices are, which used to be the the county, I guess the county farm would be the the term? The county farm, the county home, yeah, Yeah. what they call that, what they call it at the time. And when we lived where Dragonfly Lane is now, our house burned down. I can remember the fire. And that must have been devastating. Did you lose down. everything? Yeah, we lost everything because it was an older house and it just went up really mm-hmm. fast. And the fire company was there, but they could do nothing. So after the house burned for a while, we just moved into the garage for some place to be. And well, to was, survive, it sounds like. Survive. I mean, you lost your house. Things were There wasn't as much uh, services to help people back then in these right. situations and it was a dirt floor and there was a cloth hung up between the sleeping area and the living area and uh, from there the authorities decided that wasn't a good place so they moved us to the county home mm-hmm. and as kids we got on the bus from the county home and you know kids that will do not nice things teach mm-hmm. you that from where you're coming from and that so it, it wasn't so people too, picked too on cool. you because you yeah. were at the county yeah. home yeah, but, but uh, we lived there, and there were some funny things there that we remember. There was a guy that used to sit in the graveyard there on his haunches, and he'd have a pair of barber shears, and he'd trim the tombstones with barber shears. Uh, yeah, and he'd sit there, and we'd go by, and he'd look at us, and we were always afraid of going by there. Mm-hmm. And they had another guy there who was kind of different. He would go around with a burlap bag on his back, and he'd go to any of the farms or any of the areas around, and he'd pick up the cats and bring them back and put them in the barn at the county home because there were a lot of cows and a lot of grain and stuff there. And then so he'd bring them there, and they'd keep down the mice yeah. population, you know. He'd do that all the time. So the county offices where Shumway Hill was, there were, what, hundreds of people that, that lived there t- as temporary shelter when they were in, in the need through the county? Yeah, there were quite a few, and they were older people. Did they have jobs on the farm, or was the farm run independently? Yeah. Or Well, it, it was run. Uh, uh, Waldo Parcell, which had the potato farms, he was in charge of it, and they would run it. You were there for a couple of years, and then got your family no, got themselves back on their feet and moved we, on? We, we were there for a short while, and then they placed us into the first house as you go up the Mount Zion Road. We were there for a while, and then I remember we then went to a place on Charleston Street, actually it's 38 Charleston Street, or by the railroad track there, and I can remember I had a BB gun, and I'd walk up and down the railroad track shooting the flying grasshoppers <laughs> for something to <laughs> I do. I never heard of a grasshopper hunter. <laughs> <laughs> and then from there, we moved to the place on Crafton Street, which was above the tombstone place. Yeah. At that point, Corning Glassworks was was going, and the tracks were were I mean several trains a day. I imagine well, back then they they went through there and they did, they went up to the Borden's Milk Place, which is no longer there. They went to the glass factory, which is no longer there. The buildings are there, but the yeah. factory isn't there. At that time, early on, the trains used to run up in the Blossburg, up in the Antrim, and yeah. all over the place there. And when my wife lived in Mansfield, she remembered the trains going across in front of their house. The right, old right. Great Mansfield Fair with the oh, actual oh. train siding and everything for, oh, for they, that. It was a big, that's how half people got to the fair. They had a gatehouse there. There were a lot of buildings there. They had a lot of activities that went on there. They had all kinds of ball games. A big baseball a, stadium, a big, covered stadium yeah, and everything, the yeah. old pictures. That was big at that mm-hmm. time. And uh, I can remember sometimes we'd go over later on and 
sit on the front porch and watch the fireworks and that from yeah. her, her parents' place. So Route 6 from Mansfield to Wellsboro was probably a quieter, smaller, right. more simpler, th- and it was a through road then, too. Now, yeah. now it's more of a, a you know, a yeah, get it, you from one town to the next town, but it, it goes from West Coast to East Coast, and there were travelers going across the country on it then. And if you realize, around the area, the distance between towns is usually 12, 15 miles. Yes. And that in the olden days, that was uh, where much they could travel in a day and take stay over. Mm-hmm. Every direction from Wellsboro, they're usually 12, 15 miles apart. If, if you read the old history before your times, before the cars, when there was a big court case in Wellsboro, people didn't go home at night because it was too far to go home. So Wellsboro would be a booming town during a major court case because all the people involved in the court case would need a hotel or a place to stay for you know, the length of the court case and at night the, the bars would be uh, like, I understand like the Wild West, but I've yet to find someone who was alive <laughs> in those days to, to <laughs> tell me about those. The old lamplighter fire in Wellsboro, speaking of bars, that was a devastating thing. Anybody who was around here 50 years ago when that happened or give or take 50 years ago, I'm sure has some sort of memories of that. Were you around? Yeah, I was. And it, it was quite a deal. They were trying to investigate it and everything and how it happened. And, and that was quite a bit of news at the time. And, uh, uh, people used to go in and they'd have a good time there. It was. Uh, this something. is next to the Dean Center, that empty lot. There was a uh, about eight or twelve apartments or rooms upstairs and a restaurant right, and lounge downstairs. Right, right. and then and it was a busy place. Yeah, several people lost their lives in right. that fire, which quite definitely, from what they figured out, was intentionally set. That right, bit, it, right. Now, never every bit of the detail ever came out on that, but <laughs> but later on, there was another place down below. There was. Kelly's Bar, and I remember years ago on uh, when the Market Basket was there on Main Street, and when the Candy Kitchen was on Main Street. And that would be where Paxson's Five and Dime, right. the left side of that, or Timeless Destination, yeah. the left side is, that was the candy store. I remember Jim Paxson telling me about that. Yeah, and uh, the Five and Dime was a busy place at that time. I mean, they sold a little bit of everything in there, and the Candy Kitchen was a busy place for the kids. I mean, after school, they'd all plock in there and get their Sundays or mm-hmm. their floats and things like that and they also hand packed ice cream for you when you wanted to take ice cream out so yeah. they had the whole soda fountain and yeah. the sit down counter yeah they had tables the kids would come yeah. in and get around the tables and get their sodas and ice cream and sit there after if you school told someone they were a soda jerk now they'd probably take offense <laughs> <laughs> yeah right but back then that was a title a job title right I can remember in 1946, they brought back the Laurel Festival. Oh, this is getting good. I want to hear about this. It went away during the war years, right? Yeah, during the war years. In in 46, it was the first year they brought it back. And at six years old, I can remember that my sister Catherine was the Laurel Queen that year. But after school, she went to New Jersey and ended up getting married and couldn't come back for the Mm -hmm. next year. Is your sister still with us? No, she's Mm -hmm. passed away a few years ago. Yeah. She used to work at Dunham's in the uh, cooling section. What, your sister's name was? Catherine. Uh-huh. And her, I'm sure there's some people listening that remember her. That's This show is filled with people going, oh my gosh, I remember that. I remember that moment. <laughs> yeah, she was in Brick, New Jersey, Point Pleasant, New Jersey, and she moved back here for a while and, and liked the area, but her kids wouldn't come back to mm-hmm. the area because they were in the place where there's more action. So she then moved back to yeah. New Jersey again. So what was the Laurel Festival like in 1946? When, uh, you, I know I know you're six years old. Did you go to a couple of them after that? So do you have some early memories of the 46, 47, 48-ish uh, area? I, I remember that definitely because I remember my sister going by on the float, and I uh, followed down the street after it. And, and that, you're super proud of her? Oh, yeah. At the time, she lived with my grandparents in Tioga, so she was the queen from Tioga. We were all proud of her in that, so she was a good-looking blonde at the time, you know, and really nice. Probably back then, you got a $20 scholarship. Now it's several <laughs> thousand. <laughs> yeah. But 20 bucks went a little further back then. Yeah. Do, what else do you remember about the parades? Were they bigger then? I know there was a lot of floats and Corning Glassworks would get involved, and a lot of the big <laughs> industries added some really neat things to the parade. Not that they're not awesome now, but everything evolves. Yeah, at the time, uh, I 
don't remember too much, but I remember it go up one side and down the other side, and it was crowded, and everybody came to see it, just like they do so now. So the parade went down both sides of Main Street, so did you turn I, a few I, in your memories? I think that's what I remember. I'm not positive, but mm-hmm. I think that's what it was. And I remember sitting on the front of the steps of the market basket at the time and following it down through. You mentioned the market basket a few times. Where What's there now, or where are we? Or I know that's hard to place these things. <laughs> yeah, well, it was on the side where the Five and Dime was. In okay, that area. where Paxson's Five and Dime, yeah. Timeless is yeah. now somewhere where? along there. And back then, the fire company was on Main Street, too, where Garrison's Men's Shop was. Yeah. That was the borough yeah. building. Yeah. There was actually yeah. garage doors and fire trucks came in on Main Street where Garrison's was, which is also something that people go, well, really? <laughs> yeah, and, and years later, too, there are also a couple women's stores. There's Nowhere's and another one uh, on Main Street. And uh, there were a lot of car places and there were a lot of the barber shops <laughs> <laughs> at the time, which is kind of different now. Yeah. There was a, a Cadillac dealer in Wellsboro, too. Uh, yeah, there was a Chevy dealer and uh, everything. There was one over there by the lighting place. Yeah, right oh, now. Danny Electric Danny over there. Danny Electric, yeah. yeah. I know there was something next to Danny Electric. There's, it looks like an old foundation. I'm assuming that was a fire there, too. Was that the, I want to say the wooden nickel or the silver dollar, or it had some kind of coin name to it? Yeah, there was one there, but I can't remember what it was. There was a lot of places to wet your whistle around. That, that whole corner changed, you know, yeah, the, where Dunham's Park parking lot is for the Dewitt Center behind Dunham's. That wasn't always a parking lot when you were a kid. What was there? Behind uh, Dunham's was on Mon Street there. And that was uh, where the barbershop and uh, McNary Owens and that was. Interesting. When I went to grade school, I went over to Whitneyville. There were three buildings there that are torn down now. And there was the one big main building and the two on the outside. And the first grade was in the main building. Second grade was looking at it, was mm-hmm. on the right, and third grade was on the left. And then you went into the main building for your upper grades. And when you went on vacation and came back for something, you smelled the oil. They always oiled the floors to keep the dirt dust down, which was... Like, well, our roads, they would just, oil your and, floors. And you'd smell that oil. Plus, if you didn't bring your lunch with the deer meat and the sandwiches and that, yeah. you brought your lunch and Reby's, which was next door, they cooked the food. Mm -hmm. and the kids teacher would send a couple kids over to bring it over and you'd have these big trays of food yeah and you're awfully scared to bring it over because if you spilled it that was the food for the other kids we used to have to build the fires help build the fires in those outbuildings and and school you had to build the fires oh my gosh do you have a little bit of time fred is it okay if we do a two-part segment on this i was planning on just one but you got so many stories uh sure we're gonna wrap this one up next week we'll be back talk about whitneyville about so many other neat things here you've got such a sharp memory i don't want to lose out on any of this stuff here so tune in again next saturday this one and like all our other episodes you can go to youtube.com and search for casey 101 hometown country saturday with seniors you can hear all the episodes on there our show has been brought to you today by hemingway general contractor we do the show every Saturday morning at 10 a.m. Give Alan or Brian a call at Hemingway's and ask them about their Luxair furnaces, which are super efficient, 95% efficient, come with a 10-year parts and labor warranty included when you buy it through them, 